whenever jupiter is strong in the horoscope and moon is connected with rahu or ketu then there is a high possibility that at some stage the native may come face to face with diabetes and the reason is very simple in fact truth is very simple god is very simple love is very simple but it is our mind that goes on complicating the things otherwise everything is simple and so you have to understand that jupiter is a big eater jupiter is a foodie jupiter likes to eat sweet a lot of sweets mithai cakes pastries if you are a jupiterian or jupiter is very strong in your chart then definitely you will love to eat sweets sweet food and on top of that if you have a moon which is connected with rahu then you become more obsessed towards eating sweets if you have a moon that is connected with ketu then you are not much bothered about your diet you just go on eating and if your moon is with venus then it gives a pleasure seeking mind the person likes to eat all kind of delicacies so a strong jupiter and a moon connected with rahu or ketu or venus is a perfect scenario where the person at some stage will be caught by diabetes and i tell you all that only a man of heart a man who follows his heart will some day caught by diabetes because such a man has been such a fool god's fool he has been so generous he have been sharing so many things with others he himself have eaten lot of sweet food and he has also shared it with many he is a sweet person and his sweetness is so much that the insulin fell short that is why during the old days diabetes was directly connected with a rich person this richness was connected with his the richness of his heart his generosity a stingy person will never get diabetes he may get some other disease but a person who has a large heart who is a sweet person who goes on sharing with others who eats a lot of sweet foods and also shares a lot of sweet foods with others such a man is bound to get diabetes at some stage in life because he has been so much of a follower of a heart he enjoyed his life living by helping others 
by eating and sharing with others. He is a good jolly man and out of 100 percentage most of them who get diabetes are found to be jolly person, a large hearted person. So diabetes is also a sign in a way of a man or a woman who have been like a flowing river, always jolly and sharing with others and living his or her life to the fullest. That is why primarily diabetes is connected with Jupiter. A strong Jupiter, even a good medicine has a side effect. Similarly, a strong Jupiter also has some side effect. And that side effect comes in the form of diabetes. Only if along with strong Jupiter, you have a moon, you have a mind, that is either obsessed because of Rahu connection with Moon, that is not bothered because of connection with Ketu, or a mind that is too much pleasure seeking, Bhogi, because of connection with Venus. So when you have a strong Jupiter with a Moon associated with Rahu, Ketu or Venus, then there is a high possibility that at some stage you may find him or her getting diabetes. Generosity or a generous person is always a Jupiterian person. Whenever Jupiter is placed in the first house, in the second house, in the fourth house, seventh house, tenth house, eleventh house, then the person is having a strong Jupiter. He is a good heart person unless there is some negative aspect to it. And it is natural that the more grand, the more large hearted you are, the more you may come face to face with this world famous friend, Diabetes. The reason I said, the reason I use the word friend, because whenever you are caught up with any disease, you should first accept it. The more you accept it, the more your body starts healing faster. But what happens in general is that if you get diabetes or if you get any kind of other disease, then you try to reject it. You are not willing to accept it in totality. And because of that, the body is not able to heal faster. So the first step is to accept whatever comes. You all must realize that at some stage of your life, you are bound to be caught by some disease and out of all those diseases, diabetes is far more manageable than the other. A few days ago, a man said that I just discovered that I have got diabetes. So I said, why are you so upset? What if you would have got cancer? But you have got a better deal. You have got only diabetes. So always be grateful. A grateful heart is a beautiful heart. A man who says thank you from the depth of his heart is always blessed by God. 
because God loves a grateful heart. A grateful heart is a beautiful heart. I tell you and to all a very simple secret that when you accept a disease that has come your way and when you remain grateful 99% of all your health issues slowly slowly start fading away and you recover much faster what is necessary is to first accept and at the same time be thankful A man who accepts all that life provides with a sense of gratitude becomes a Buddha. So, never resent, never reject what has come your way. Accept it with an open heart and also be grateful to God that you are still alive. That is why I always say that a grateful man or a grateful woman always finds success. The key is in being grateful, being thankful. It reminds me of a small story. There was a man sitting in a garden and he was a poor man and he was thinking that how unfortunate I am because I cannot buy a good, a new pair of shoes. And he was just crying complaining and at that moment he saw a man who had no legs and he was just seated on a, on a nearby road. Looking at that man, this man realized that thank God at least I have legs. So, the perception changes, you see. When thoughts change, perception change. And the moment this man realized that at least I have legs, he became thankful. A few minutes ago, he was complaining to God that I don't have money to buy a new pair of shoes. But the moment he saw a man who had no legs, his thought changed, his perception changed. And now, a thankless man became a thankful man. So it all depends on the quality of your thoughts, on your perception. You may study a lot of things, you may gain a lot of knowledge, you may know everything about this world, but still what makes you unique is your quality of thoughts, is what you are from within. So first, we have to focus within. Otherwise, everything is available. Ekalavya was also competent like Arjuna. But Arjuna was Arjuna. 
the devotion that he had for Lord Krishna was something that Ekalavya never had. Ekalavya remained just a student, whereas Arjuna became a disciple. And there is a difference between a student and a disciple. A student is always in rush. He wants to gather knowledge. He wants to make money of that knowledge. Whereas a disciple is always willing to wait. A disciple is always patient. He can wait and wait and he can go on waiting. There is no rush. It reminds me of Mahakasyap. Mahakasyap was the first enlightened disciple of Buddha. But his story is very, very interesting. When Mahakasyap came, he came to seek answers to the questions that he had. But the moment he came, and he became a disciple of Buddha. He stopped asking questions. He would just sit and look at the master, his omnipresence, his peace, his bliss. And he would never ask any question. And the other disciples would come and ask him, why you don't ask any question? And Mahakasyap said, you all are right. It is true that I came from far away land to seek answers, to ask questions. But the moment I came here and the moment I met Buddha, all my questions fade away. Just looking at him, I forgot all my questions. I remained silent. And Mahakasyap remained silent for many years. And one day, he became enlightened. And he was the first disciple of Buddha who became enlightened. And he laughed. And Buddha said, Why are you laughing? And Mahakasyap said, I wanted to become the last disciple, the last one to attain enlightenment. But I became the first to attain enlightenment. And Buddha asked, Why you wanted to become the last one? And Mahakasyap said, Because I know, I know that the moment one becomes enlightened, you ask them to leave, to go to far away place and share the light. And I wanted to be with you for a longer time. And so, my wish was to become the last one to attain enlightenment. This is how the love of a disciple is. Someone like Mahakasyap, who, was, who wanted to be the last one, but he became the first one. There should be no goal, no agenda, when you are in the presence of the Master. The whole beauty of Mahakasyap is that until he came to Buddha, he was all head. The moment he came in touch of Buddha, the head was dropped and what remained was heart. And the heart is always willing to surrender. The head is never willing to surrender. That is why a man of heart is a beautiful person.
he is willing to surrender at the feet of the master and only when you are willing to surrender at the feet of the master that you will be able to change in the true sense you cannot change yourself the old cannot change itself you have to let other change you you have to allow change to happen within you and that is possible only when you surrender to your master that is why krishna says to arjuna surrender to me in totality and i will take care of all your worries that is why jesus says to peter the fisherman follow me and i will make you the fisher of men that is why buddha says to ananda that just listen to my words let my words penetrate your being and those words itself will bring a great transformation within you and ananda followed buddha for 40 years a disciple is always willing to wait a disciple is never in rush a student is always in rush understand the difference between a student and a disciple that is why everything is possible the larger question is whether you are willing to surrender at the feet of the master whether you are willing to let god drive your life because god can do much with your life than you can the whole suffering of your life is simply to help you come closer to god god consciousness that is why it is said that suffering is the sole origin of consciousness enough for today i'll be sharing more very soon you all take care